The Skagit River in Northwest Washington is the largest and most biologically important river in the Puget Sound Basin. Within the river's fertile valley sits the city of Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon is the economic center of the valley with its downtown area situated along the river's banks. Being in the Skagit River floodplain means this community, and particularly the downtown area, is frequently at risk for flooding. For decades, residents of Mount Vernon engaged in a manual approach to fighting floods by organizing a huge community-wide effort to fill and place sandbags. Beginning in 2003, city leaders decided they needed a more practical and permanent solution to protect their downtown. After a decade and a half of continuous planning and three phases of construction, Mount Vernon's waterfront revitalization and flood protection project is now complete. The result is the removal of much of the downtown from the map floodplain, a new public use promenade that includes a 24 foot wide pedestrian river walk, and most important, protection from frequent flooding by means of a permanent flood wall and levee that will protect vital downtown properties for years to come. In this video, we'll hear from Mount Vernon Mayor Jill Boudreaux and Public Works Director Esco Bell as they talk more about this project. So the flood project here in Mount Vernon really was conceived uh, about a decade ago and the entire point is that we protect our historic downtown from the historic flooding that occurs along the Skagit River. So the idea that our flood protection protects all the way along that historic downtown, it's the lowest level in the dike system in our county, but that was really the gist behind it, is how do we protect this particular section of town. We would have uh, 12 hours of notice between floodwaters in the river up in concrete and when they would get down to here. So we had 12 hours to get uh, uh, a sandbag wall built, about 1,600 feet long. It would be 150,000 sandbags. We get 1,500 to 2,000 volunteers and it, it'd take 12 hours of just white knuckle, stressful crisis management to uh, do that. Right from the beginning when we were doing master planning and where, where the idea came from, it was involved in an advisory group and that was members of the Chamber of Commerce, members of our downtown business district, property owners, business owners in this area. So right from the beginning, it was really a collective idea and a collective um, support for this and so what has then happened is you know all of those stakeholders feel like they have a win they were part of that vision which just really means that it's a giant celebration that this project is complete we have to come up with a solution for mitigation that meets the needs of the federal government you know clearly and that overarching piece of flooding but that also mitigates impacts, I would say, not just financially, but you're mitigating the impact to the community and the economic development. So with certification, we're able to then relieve property owners of some of the flood insurance requirements and other legal requirements that they may have in running their business uh, from day to day. So it's very important that we protect, but that then there is an economic benefit after that protection is realized. The partnership with FEMA, there has been times where there's been disagreement. We had some differences in our opinions about hydrology. That was really the main reason why there was uh, some friction between the locals and FEMA. We had some good knowledge about what we thought the, the, the database supported for hydrology. But when it came to this project in the downtown, it didn't kill the project, whether it was the more conservative Army Corps of Hydrology or whether it was the city's hydrology. Once we got into the stage where we were going to use the Army Corps hydrology. That's good conservative hydrology. It didn't hurt our ability to do this project. We then submitted the project to FEMA for what you call a conditional letter of map revision. And that was meant to just get the project accepted in terms of all of our design and everything so that when we actually completed it, you folks at FEMA would be able to just change your maps and do a letter of map revision. The project itself really needed to not just be a gigantic wall, it needed to be an amenity. And I think that's what we've been able to demonstrate here in our town, is that it is flood protection, but people are enjoying this uh, with the promenade every single day. So it functions during flood season in a very critical way, but it functions every day in a secondary critical way. In order to not make our downtown look like a big prison or something like that with this huge concrete wall, we got lots of openings just to make it so that, you know, 99% of the time, it's like this, beautiful out and people want to use it. This is our Riverwalk Park, it is totally integrated with this flood structure. So all we have to do now, instead of 2,000 volunteers for sandbaggings, we just close these 
these openings up. We use aluminum stop logs, they're four inch by six inch deep stop logs, and we just stack them up and they put braces up like that. We can do those with our own crews, with our own equipment. We can set this up in 12 hours time with just our crews and we'll mobilize anywhere from eight to 20 people off of our city crews to do this. I think a big responsibility of someone like myself in, in the position I'm in as an elected leader is really being able to be um, communicative about the vision and really getting kind of a picture set in people's minds. It's so much more successful when you can get them excited about the project, you can share visualizations, you, yes, and you can share the data, you know, here's why we want to do something. I think making sure that you're continuing that vision, whether you're, there's a change of administration. So I came into this project, you know, after a mayor who got it going and sometimes leaders change things when they come in, but that is detrimental to your community. You know, really keeping in mind what the vision is long-term because things like this project can take 10 years and, but they're so worth it when it's done. So any, any leader, I just really encourage, you know, set the vision, stick to that vision, defend the vision um, to people um, through good information, but that's how you're going to achieve success in something like this. And we, of course, will never be done with working with how we live up close and personal to the river. We're in a better position by far than we were. What happens now is people come down to the waterfront and they're almost cheering on our staff, a minimal staff that can set this up in a matter of hours. And it's almost they come down to celebrate our success. They're fascinated to see the water. And even though it's a very serious threat, when you're looking at the amount of water that comes through, people, I think, are not only proud, they're, they feel very secure that this project is here, and they um, celebrate our success together.